This is a Nikon Coolpix L820 digital camera. I found this at a local thrift shop for just a few dollars. Unfortunately, the camera is totally dead. It does nothing at all. You put the batteries in there. There's no sign of life whatsoever. I suspect this camera had some sort of a violent trauma. If you take, if you open the battery cover here, there are little plastic hooks here that hold the battery cover down. The ones here, 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 and here are broken. The battery cover is being held only by the hooks here and here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. But this is a pretty decent camera when it's working. The best thing about this camera is it's got a 30x optical zoom. It also shoots uh, 16 megapixel still images, and it shoots uh, video at full high definition, that is 1080 by 1920. It's a nice mid-level semi-professional camera. It would be nice if I could get this thing running. When I work on uh, something like this, it's a good idea to have something to hold all the little tiny screws and everything. I like to use these little pill jars. These, these screws are so tiny. If they fall into the carpeting, you'll probably never find them again. Uh, also, a screwdriver with a very small Phillips head on it. An old Craftsman 00 here. Maybe some tweezers for gripping or picking things up. That's nice to have. Now one thing I like to do is as I'm working on something like this, it's nice to take a second camera and just shoot pictures as you're going. When you're having to reassemble this thing, sometimes you can't remember exactly what went where, particularly if Let's say you have to order a part and it has to, you know, comes in two weeks later. You, you can't remember after two weeks exactly what it was you did. But if you've got a photographic record, it can really save your life putting the thing back together. So we will now disassemble this camera. On the top, I don't see any screws. On the left side, we got two screws that are visible and one underneath this cover here. On the right side we've got one screw here and we've got another one underneath this cover and on the bottom we've got four screws here and two screws here and if we open up the battery case we have got one two three four screws on this black surface here but then down deep inside of that battery compartment there's also a screw now the screws on the outside the screws that are visible will be painted black. That's for cosmetic purposes. They just look nicer. But in, internally, all the screws will be silver. Now, almost all of the screws in this camera will be of two varieties. They will either be coarse thread screws that are four millimeters in length, and those are going to go into plastic, or they will be 3.5 millimeter long fine thread screws, and those are going to go into metal. And I will call them out as I go whether they're fine or coarse thread. And if they're any size other than those two, I will also point that out. Now, as I'm disassembling this thing, when I'm using the screwdriver to take out screws, I'm going to speed up the video just to, to get through that quicker. We're going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to remove these six screws, starting here. Now these four screws are fine thread, these two th screws are coarse thread. I'm going to go to the left side, lo looking from the back. When I say left side, I'm talking about looking from the back. Okay, so on this side, we have three screws. We're going to go ahead and remove those now. Now these two screws are coarse thread. And this one is a fine thread, but this is a very small fine thread. This is only about two and a half millimeters long. So that one's different than the rest. And remember that when you put it back together. Now we will go to the right side and we will take the screws out from the right side. Okay, now this is a coarse thread screw and that is a fine thread screw. Now we have to pop open the flash, and when we do, it reveals that there's a screw way down deep inside of here. Okay, way down deep inside of there. And we'll take that off. This one's a little difficult to get at. 
and that is a coarse thread screw. Now with all those screws out, we can remove the back off the rest of the camera. At this point, we don't actually need to remove these uh, screws here. Okay, now when we pry this thing apart, you can probably get your thumbnail in there a little bit and sort of pry it open a bit. It, it, it works best to start from the bottom, sort of work your way around. And it tends to get caught up. It'll get caught up up here someplace. You might need to get a spogger or something in there and pry it open. There we go. It's hanging up right in here somewhere. Give it a little bit of a. There we go. And off comes the back. There's no wires or anything connecting to the two together just comes off. One thing to make note of here, we've got a little uh, light pipe here of some sort. This is uh, this is uh, where the uh, power light is, right underneath there. Now that could fall off, so be mindful of that. Okay, now we've exposed the insides. Now the next thing that comes off is the screen. The screen is held in a little frame here. A little frame right there. You just get your thumbnail under there, just sort of pop it out of there. We can slide it this way. You can expose these two cables holding it on. A wide cable and a narrow cable. These cables are what they call flip lock. You have to just sort of get your thumbnail underneath that and, and you know flip it up. And that will release the cable. I'll go right under there and just sort of carefully, very carefully flip it like so, and get the other one, like so, okay, and then just slide it out, and there it is. We have the screen in our hand. Now, if you have a camera with a broken screen, you've now gone far enough to where you can replace your screen. Now, we have this metal plate here. All of the electronics are hiding underneath it. Now, this metal plate is held on by five screws. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll go ahead and remove those screws now. Now all five of these screws are four millimeter coarse thread screws. And now this metal plate will come off. One thing to be mindful of before you pull that metal plate off, this is where a tripod connects, okay, and it's being held on by that metal plate. When you remove the metal plate, this metal part is going to fall out. Now you have to just sort of lift it out of there. It might stick on you, okay. You now it sticks because you have these two sticky little pads here. These two pads are for thermal transfer on these two chips. It's using the metal plate as a heat sink. Anyway, you can see where they, they stick on right there. So if you're having trouble getting off, that's, that's probably what's holding it. And here's that metal piece where the tripod would normally screw into. It had been sitting right there. Next, we're going to remove this piece right here. This piece contains the switch which controls the zoom in and out. That piece that holds the zoom control is held in place in part by a screw that's down at the bottom of this battery well. Now this is a case where you really wish you had a longer screwdriver, but with a little effort I think we can get it on the tip of that screw and we can unscrew it. Okay, that took some doing. If you're going to undertake a project like this, you might consider investing in a long, narrow point screwdriver. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy one myself after that. And this is also a four millimeter long coarse thread screw. And the other thing holding it on is a screw on the right side just below the uh, external power supply door. And it is also a four millimeter coarse thread screw. Now with that, this part here should become loose, and it does, and there it is. 
Now there's a cable holding it on to the circuit board down here. Now we have exposed that part of the camera. We will probably, I'm going to go ahead and pull this cable out. I don't like that thing sort of waving around there. Every time it flexes, you're running the risk of breaking that connection. Now in order to get this cable out, you want to flip up this little lock right here with your thumbnail, like so. Now that'll come out a lot easier. And out it comes. Okay, now that part is completely separated. It is not apparent at this point why the camera won't turn on. Now looking into the battery wells, the contact at the bottom of the, this battery well is the minus terminal, and the contact at the bottom of this battery well is the positive for all four batteries in series. Now you would think there would be continuity between this terminal and you know the ground points on the on the main board, but there isn't. You know, using my ohmmeter between this point and this point, I, I do not find any continuity, which is curious. Although I do find continuity to that point right there, to the ground line. Is it possible the ground line has been broken somewhere along the line? Now, in order to get this front plastic off, it appears that I'm going to have to desolder these wires. That's going to greatly complicate things. One nice thing is that all of these wires here are color-coded and the colors are called out on the board itself, GY for gray, BK for black, WT for white, and so on. So if I do have to desolder them, I can get them back on again. I'm going to go ahead and remove the five screws off the top from this area. One, two, three, four, five. All of these screws are four millimeter coarse thread screws, except for this one, which is a little bit shorter. It's about a 3.2 millimeter coarse thread screw. I'm now going to remove these two screws from the back here and here. Both, both of those screws were four millimeter coarse thread. Now, as for these wires here, the first four wires go to the flash. This red and black wire, they go over here, probably to the high voltage capacitor that provides the voltage for the flash. The brown and the blue wires here, they go to this little switch right here, which determines whether the flash is up or not. That appears to be what that is. And we have a black and a gray wire, which appear to go to this microphone, and a green and a yellow, which appear to go to this microphone. I'm not sure what these other wires do. I'm going to go ahead and remove these four screws from the battery compartment. I'm not sure if they're involved in holding on the front plastic, but I'm going to go ahead and remove them anyway. Now, those four screws are 3.5 millimeter long black coarse thread screws. Now we will look at the flash mechanism. It's covered by this little lid here. There's a button on it to lift it. And there's our little flash bulb. Now since all the screws in here are black, I'm going to use a flashlight here to help point things out. So here there's a screw, and here there is a screw. Behind this little ridge right here, there's two screws here and here. Now this lid here has a little plastic cover on it and it's held on partially by a screw on each side, one here and one here. This lid here kind of blocks our access a little bit. If you, you want to get a screwdriver through here to reach some of these screws, but you got to get this lid off first before you do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out of the lid here on the right side. And on the left side and those are both four millimeter long coarse thread screws. Now this lid on the top is held on by clips and things here and here and also in the front here. I'm going to start here in the front. 
Okay, got that lifted up there. And this one here on the side. There's a little tail on this piece right here. You have to be careful that you don't break it. There. It's a, this is a key piece you want to be careful not to break. Okay, now we have exposed the flash attachment insides, the flash bulb itself. If your flash bulb has gone bad, you can now replace it if you need to. It's held on with these three wires. They are black, blue, and orange. The blue wire solders to this point. The black and the orange are traced all the way back here to the circuit board. Now for these other screws, I'll take out this one first. Now to get the other one, we have to tilt this down. Now we can see that other screw. Now these two screws are 3.2 millimeters in length, coarse thread, and they have a very narrow shaft. Now we have these two screws here, and in order to get them we have to place our screwdriver through that opening. And I've acquired a nice long small point Phillips head for the job. There's one. There's the other. Now these are the smallest screws I've encountered so far. These are 2.5 millimeters in length, coarse thread, and narrow diameter shaft. You can see the release mechanism moving when I press the button on the side there. Here's the release right there. Now in order to remove this circuit board, it appears I'm going to have to desolder this connector right here. There is a daughter board here, which is soldered to this board at a right angle, and those are the solder joints holding it together. These soldered wires I can perhaps leave for now, but I must desolder this one because that board is not flexible. That's at a right angle. That's probably going to prevent me from pulling it out. And if I disconnect these cables by opening those flip locks, it appears that this board will be mobilized, and perhaps I can flip it up this way and see what's underneath it. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to desolder that connection right there. I have now desoldered these connectors here. You can see the board is now somewhat loose. I'm going to open up these flip lock connectors and disconnect these cables. These three flat cables are now disconnected. Now we're being held over here. Those two output connectors for the HDMI and the video, those are kind of caught here with this piece of plastic. I may have to pry that out of there. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, that seems to have worked. Now we have these two little parts we have to be mindful of because you know, they're, they're going to just fall out now. We have this little piece right here. And there's a little hole right there where a screw goes. The screw goes right through here. And then we have this part, this little springy part. I'm not sure exactly what it does. We'll take that out also. Again, just remember to put those back in when you reassemble it. Now we're going to have we're going to have the CCD, the charge couple devices, probably here, and that appears to be held in by screws here, here, and here. With the board mobilized, we can flip this board over, and underneath we see a battery here. This is the battery to maintain the clock, the time and date. If the camera is no longer Remembering the time and date, it could be that this battery has failed. Anyway, it's soldered into place with those two points right there. My battery happens to still be good, so I'm not going to replace that. Now with the board tilted back, we are exposing 
what appears to be a motor. I believe that this motor drives the lens forward and backwards. It's held on with a screw here and a screw here and some tape. Now there are some additional screws. There's a 3.2 millimeter long coarse thread screw here which holds this piece of metal and that's where your strap goes. And there's other screws here and here and here. And those I'm sure are involved with holding the front cover on. Now I did remove all of those screws. I still am unable to remove the front cover. It's still being held by something I'm not sure what. I don't really want to push it any further. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think this camera may still be fixable. I am intrigued by the fact that we seem to have lost the ground connection to this board. And what I'm going to attempt to do is solder a jumper wire between one of these ground points and this pin up here where the ground comes into the board. I suspect that there's a circuit trace inside this board that is broken. So I'm going to solder a jumper wire in and then I'm going to reassemble the camera and see if that brings it back to life. We'll begin the reassembly process. Pull our board up. We need to replace this metal piece again. Now for that second metal piece, goes right there on top of it. With those two metal pieces back in place, we now have to fold the board back down. And we have to get those uh, two connectors to line up underneath this plastic piece. That little post right there has got to line up with this hole right here. In order to get that post to line up, you have to kind of jam a screwdriver in there or something and sort of drive them apart a little bit. Pushing that metal piece this way and the plastic cover this way. And if you get it lined up just right, then you can push it down and your connectors now line up like they should. Next, you're going to put in two of the four millimeter long coarse thread screws. One here and one here. Now we will reconnect these three cables to the main board. Start with the long one first, the hardest one. Okay, number two. And number three. Okay, the three cables are in and the flip locks are locked down. Next, we are going to re-solder this connector here. That's going to be the most difficult part, getting all these connectors to made up. And then, of course, we've got the problem right here. We've got to get a jumper from that point right there to some ground. I think maybe we can go right to here. It's a nice short distance. But that's what we have to do now. I have re-soldered these joints right here. This was quite difficult to do. So we have two boards that are basically perpendicular to one another, you know, and you're trying to bridge solder from one board to the other, jumping over a gap. When it took me multiple tries, they would keep uh, bridging side to side. Now, maybe you can see it. I also soldered in a little jumper wire right there. According to my ohm meter, I now have continuity between battery ground and the board ground. Next we will go to the bottom of the camera and we'll put these four screws back in that we took out earlier. We probably didn't really need to. These screws are 3.5 millimeter long black coarse thread screws. And 
Now, if along the way somewhere you manage to pull this little cover off the uh, power adapter, you want to be sure to put that in now because once you put the back cover on, you won't be able to. You just you just kind of pop it right in there, and there it goes. On the top of the camera, there are five screws that we removed. We're now going to put those back in. Now those go here. This is a five millimeter screw. Here, here, and here. Those are four millimeter screws. And here is a 3.2 millimeter screw. This hole here is where the screw in the battery compartment comes up through and connects to the zoom control. We'll go ahead and put those screws in now. Okay, those five screws are back in. Also along the top of the camera, we're going to go ahead and put the screws back into the flash assembly. I'm going to pop this open. Remember now, in the front, there are two screws here and here. These are the smallest screws in the camera. They're 2.5 millimeters long, coarse, and narrow shaft. And then here and here, we have two 3 millimeter long, black, coarse, narrow thread screws. In order to put that last screw in, we're going to have to fold this down in order to access that screw. These very small screws go through this hole right here. Okay, those four screws are in. Now to put the lid on the flash attachment, I'll start by bringing the flash attachment up. Now the flash attachment is held by two screws, one on either side. These screws are four millimeters long, black coarse thread. Now one thing we have to be mindful of, this flash bulb has to be seated in there properly. Not, in other words, it's not all the way in, then this thing will not pop on properly. Don't force it. You know, just go back and, and make sure you got that thing positioned down right. Now this little tail has to go in here first. And that is partially on. Now we'll go ahead and snap that down, starting at the front. There, it snapped in properly. That means that means the bulb is seated properly. It's all snapped down correctly. We'll go ahead and put those two screws in. Okay, now the flash and its cover are now put back in correctly. Next, we will put the focus control back on the top, and that's held on by a screw which comes in through the bottom down here. This hole up here is where that screw comes through from underneath and it goes into a little hole right there. Now we have to be very careful of this cable right here. We're going to have to get it into that socket right there without damaging it. Now you want this cable to run underneath this little black piece right here. Now in order to uh, push this connector back into this socket. Remember, there's a flip lock here. So make sure that flip lock is up. Like so, and now go ahead and flip it down and lock it in place. Now the cable is inside the socket and the socket has been snapped down. And we just need to give this thing a little bit of a tug to get it in better position get some of it on this side of that little black divider there. There. I just pushed it through. Okay, that's where you want it. Now we can put the uh, focus control on in place and just sort of snap it in, okay? Now the only thing we need to do now is put in that screw from the underside to hold the focus control in place. And you can see at the bottom of the battery well on the right, there's a little hole down there for the screw. And now I'm going to go ahead and put that screw in using this nice long screwdriver. Okay, that's got it. You can see that screw in place down there. And the focus control is now fixed in place with that screw. Next, we will put the metal plate on the back that holds the screen. Before we do that, though, let's not forget to put our receptacle for the tripod on. And that goes in here. Because this, this little piece here is going to lock it into place. 
Now this plate is held on by several four millimeter screws here, 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 and here. We'll put those on now. Now all five screws are in holding the metal plate down. Now over here on the right, we need to put in a four millimeter screw. This holds in the anchor for the strap. If we've done everything right so far, we should now be all out of silver screws. Now we can put the screen back on. If you haven't already done so, now would be a good time to clean off the screen because once the back of the camera goes on, you really can't access this any further. We have two flip lock connectors we have to mate up with, a big one and a little one. Try the big one first. Okay, those two cables are in place in their respective flip lock connectors. And the screen just sort of fits into this little square bracket. Okay, I got that in. These sort of two springy sides here and here, I think you have to push against those first and then get it locked over here and here. Now we are ready to put the back on. We slide it over. And gently push it into place. With the back plastic on, we will now start putting screws in place. We'll start on the bottom. There are four 3.5 millimeter long fine thread screws around the uh, tripod receptacle. We'll put those on. Now over here, there are two four millimeter coarse thread screws. Put those on. Now over here on the left side, underneath the video output door, there's a 2.5 millimeter fine thread screw, which goes in this hole here. Now there are two four millimeter coarse thread screws that go here and here. On the right side, under the power adapter door, there is a 3.5 millimeter fine thread screw. Also on the right side, we have a four millimeter coarse thread screw. Now underneath the flash attachment, down in here goes a four millimeter coarse thread narrow diameter screw. And with that, we should have all the screws in place and the camera completely reassembled. Now that we have reassembled the camera, we'll see how we did. Now the battery door here has got problems. These little tabs here which help hold it down are broken off. I'm going to have to hold this with my finger really to keep the door from breaking open, but okay. Let's see what happens when we press the power button. Wow. It's come to life. It was completely dead before. Now we have signs of life. Okay. Oh, look at that. The lens came out. And look at that. We are seeing through the LCD screen. Fantastic. Okay, I just took this camera outdoors and I shot some test images. I was able to shoot a number of pictures real quick. This camera works very well. The zoom, look at that zoom. This is the same object. One, two, three, look at that 30x zoom, that's fantastic. Okay, so the camera is working. Now, just to review, 
I found this camera at a thrift store for just a few dollars, and I found it was completely dead. It did nothing. I partially disassembled it, and I found discontinuity between the battery ground and the circuit board ground, and I soldered in a jumper wire, and that seems to have fixed the problem. Now, if you need to disassemble yours, I hope my video will be helpful. I mean, I really did it in a very careful step-by-step -step manner, but I did not take the disassembly to completion. That is, I didn't remove the front cover and I did not expose the lens because I thought that I had found the problem with the discontinuity. I was afraid if I kept digging into the thing, I was going to end up breaking it permanently. This camera is very difficult to work on. My impression is it was never intended to be fixed. Like so many things in our society these days, electronically they're quite advanced, but build-wise they're often poor and tend to fail, and they are built in such a way that makes it difficult or impossible to re repair them. I would point to the common use of non-replaceable non batteries that, we, that are so common. I guess if the battery goes bad, you throw it away. So the intent of this sort of stuff seems to be if it breaks, just throw it away. I hate that, but a camera like this is probably between 120 and 150 US dollars new. I hate to throw something like that away. But in order to get at that board, you really you have to you have to actually desolder the circuit board. And it's really quite involved. And if you don't have good soldering skills and good soldering equipment, I would recommend you don't even try. But we got lucky with this one. We did find the problem, and I think, and it was just a lucky find, really, that I discovered that missing ground line. I'm not even sure why I checked it, but uh, that was the problem. And our camera is working once again.